for me, it starts at the front door. When the kids walk into the class, they see the welcome signs as they come in, in different languages, the languages that are represented in the classroom. Um, and they're greeted. I greet the kids in multiple languages. I greet their parents in multiple languages. Um, and that has created kind of a classroom where kids are very inquisitive about different languages, different sounds. Uh, they're interested in different cultures. They gain, all kids in the class gain a perspective of what other cultures and um, other places around the world are like and what it means to follow those traditions, not just, the, I suppose, the homogenous traditions we have in Ireland. Families very often believe that their mother tongue is not valuable to the child's learning. So actually having a conversation about this with the families and also showcasing this into their daily practice, so through homework, through communication with the families in different languages, teachers can actually demonstrate that they're not only aware, but they're also committed to multilingualism. I'm conscious of um, not only the advice I give to parents about what, what the kids need to do outside of school, but probably conscious of like how I say things in the classroom, the words I use. Teachers need to be not only aware that preserving the mother tongue, continuing to develop and use the mother tongue is important, but they need to be more proactive about showing the family that this is important. Because sometimes the message that comes out from school is for parents to speak more English at home. And for families who don't use English at all, this is very distressing. It's also a piece of advice that doesn't help the family, it doesn't help the child from a, an emotional point of view, from a you know, socio-emotional socio point of view, but also from the point of view of educational attainment. So actually giving the advice to speak English at home instead of whatever native language the family has is ill-advised. It's actually detrimental to the child's development and also to the child's and the family's confidence in who they are and what their language and their culture means to them and what it brings to the education of the child. When I was first teacher training, I would have seen or heard things um, around, you know, everyone must speak English, English must be spoken at home, um, to get the kids to really, kids who are coming maybe with, who are English language learners, it was really important to have uh, English spoken at home and English spoken in school. Um, and I would hear, I, you know, some teachers would say to kids, oh no, you need to speak English in school. And I heard that and I thought that's what I had to do. Um, I had children who would just come into my class, I suppose, the first year I was here in September, and they had very little English. And if I think back to the work that I gave them, uh, what I got them to do, it wasn't work to the, of their level, uh, of their age. It wasn't suitable for their age, it was just simple English work. Um, I feel, I, to be honest with you, after the first year I taught them, I felt quite guilty about it because I felt like I really didn't, um, they really didn't engage with what we did in whole school, whole class activities. Um, at the time, I probably just, I needed someone to maybe tell me how I could engage them. I, you know, the transfer of language skills over to English in the classroom and, and indeed um, Gaeilge Irish, which they had to learn as well. It has to be seen and felt as, as a whole school approach and it has to be something that you yourself believe in so that you can promote it within your school and within your class and your students. The challenging thing that we face in the education sector is a lack of access to uh, translation and interpretation services and that is oftentimes um, most evident when a family first arrives to school um, and of course when a family has multilingual parents and one of the languages that's spoken by one of the parents or, or some, somebody at home is English, we can communicate with the family and find out about the child's learning capacity and learning competences, what uh, their recent education experiences have been like, how long they've been at school, you know, what classes they've completed, if they've traveled to Ireland through a multiple education systems where they've been, what classes they've been in, how they've enjoyed school, their experiences both in formal education and informal education, if they've experienced any migration trauma um, on their way to Ireland, um, if they have any medical or learning challenges that might impede their, their participation at school. There's a huge amount of information gathering that takes place and should take place. Um, and when there is um, a parent or a family member at home who can engage in that level of English conversation with us, 
um, at school, that's really helpful. In the cases where they can't, that's where it becomes challenging and so um, we have to use a, a lot of translation um, and interpretation software. I communicate not only in English but if I send them an email it will be in their home language as well. For example, this week there was after schools activities for the children, but I know that some of their parents don't, so, well, one or their parents or maybe both don't speak English. So I need to translate that for them so that the child has a chance to do the after school activity. And that's definitely something, I, again, I would have done in the past. Um, and it's quite simple. So if I'm writing the email, I can copy and paste the email. I can put it into Google Docs and I can translate it into a lot of languages that are spoken in the school. Um, and so you can use Google Docs. Some schools have a Microsoft platform and they use Microsoft Teams and that. And in that, you can use Microsoft Word and in the review section there's a translation tool. And again, um, there's multiple languages there. And from what I've been told from parents uh, who've read the emails and stuff, it's fair, it's quite accurate. People really appreciate you just saying things um, in, their, in their language, um, even if it's just a sign off on a message and best wishes. Um, I think I sent someone a message and it just said uh, best wishes, but it was in Malayalam, which is a dialect in, in India. And uh, the kid came, the child came into me the next day and they just said, uh, oh, my dad was so happy because he, he thinks, he knows that the teacher knows that there's multiple dialects in India. It's a very relaxed kind of thing. It doesn't have to be today we're going to speak French and tomorrow it's going to be Russian and the next day it's going to be, you know, Korean. It can be really chilled out and relaxed and fun um, and it can be incidental. And that kind of atmosphere of plurilingualism and the love of languages is something that children can develop from a very young age. A lot of people play the game Simon Says. I have a version of it that's Teacher Says, but the the instructions are in different languages. So this year they're in, you know, Arabic or they're in Albanian or, you know, different languages that might say wrap, which means run in Albanian. Uh, so the kids will know we have to run. They'll be in English and Irish as well. And the kids need to respond and really enjoy it because we use it, say, as a transition from one lesson to another. I'll pick a child out. They will call out the different instructions and if they don't say teacher says and the person does the instructions they sit down so they and, or if they don't understand the word and they do the wrong actions they sit down so they pick up the words very very quickly um because they don't want to sit down um, and that, like, that works for even if you're doing a drama warm-up if you're doing pe you can bring in different things and i just kind of felt it was really just a simple way of bringing in different languages what we find oftentimes is children are sometimes a little bit reticent to say a word in their mother tongue in a group that's, that's, uh, mi that's mixed with children who are um, multilingual and children who are English speaking only. Um, so that we can model through the use of using a word in Irish or using a word in our mother tongue that we as the teachers have, um, th that you know speaking another language is really interesting and cool and look I can do it too. What we did is we used the different kids in the class who spoke the words, they were the language experts. So um, they taught us the different words, the different sounds. You know, it took, some of us, it took me uh, a while to learn some of them. So, um, but then now we all know them and we can all pronounce them correctly. And again, and even that, even just getting the kids to be uh, language experts and to teach the other kids um, the different languages in their home language, um, just shows the kids that their language is important. It's not about learning English or just or Irish. It's about like all languages are important and their language is important and they're important to this school. It's even not allowing kind of a hierarchy of languages to be present in your classroom. And I think some, I think maybe as someone who went, who was born in Ireland, grew up in Ireland, um, would have just done a modern foreign language in secondary school. I would, uh, you know, if I was trying to use another language, it might be easy for me just to like lean into that and just focus on that because I have some knowledge of it. But I suppose getting away from that and focusing on all languages in the school. The children seeing us as learners and themselves as the teachers sometimes can be a really powerful flip in the dynamic in a classroom. Um, today, I think the kids called out eight different languages to say that they were here. And then this morning, there was people saying Huna, uh, EC, you know, been here, things in different languages, you know, uh, and a favorite, I think. And then a girl in the class speaks uh, Thai. So a lot of the big favorite is to say tin E because you hold the E sound. So the kids just low. And again, they're playing with sounds. They're playing. How do I say that? Do I hold the E? And the girl who t speaks Thai is teaching them that. Um, and it's just a simple thing and you know it's just every morning again I prompted at the start and now I don't put up what here is in different languages they just know it and sometimes they'll bring in a new language and they'll say teacher I have a new one. 
really those things that I've brought in there are not monumental changes to, you know, my, they don't increase my workload, they actually make the class a bit, a bit more exciting. More, they bring a bit of fun to the class um, and they get the kids um, teaching other kids, teaching me, um, which reinforces their own language skills that they know in their language um, and they're using their, they're, they're transferring their language skills across from English into their home language is really important. So we need to completely shift our mindset as teachers, as school leaders and also as parents sometimes to just really see the child as multilingual, as having multiple potentials in different languages.